Well, here we go once again. We've got a special uh, artist here with us. This lady actually plays guitar, and I just saw her guitar, and it's actually quite an amazing instrument. And later on, after this interview, we're going to get Jessie to get up and play. Now, you've got to be very careful because that's Jessie, and this is Jessie. So when I say Jessie, I will say Jessie the lady and Jessie the mother. I'm sorry, shouldn't have said that. But anyway, the, the thing is that I'd like to know how you started doing all this. Well, that's a really good question. I, um, I grew up listening to country music. My grandmother was in Slim Dusty and that's sort of where it all started. Slim Dusty? Slim Dusty. She was in love with the man. My, my pop was pretty uh, jealous because there was pictures of him all over the wall and every album you could think of. And Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Loved Slim Dusty. That's where it started. Where's my Slim Dusty album? <laughs> I got one here somewhere. Have you? Signed by him. I Fantastic. don't know where it is, but, you know. But that, uh, that's where it started. How long have you been playing for? Well, on and off my whole life. So I was probably about eight when I got my first guitar lessons, but then. Eight I, years old. Yeah, thereabouts. But I only sort of had a handful of lessons in South Australia and then was self taught from that point onwards. So. You were eight years old, and what? Your parents bought you a guitar? I got mum's guitar because mum didn't want to cut her nails and. So, oh, really? Yeah. So you stole your mum's guitar? She gave it freely, but yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you picked it up naturally? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I, I played mostly by ear after the first couple of lessons. I sort of got the basic chords and then from then just sort of Did you know how to read music? No, not really. I did learn the mellophone of all things in What's high the school. mellophone? Apparently it's the cousin to the French horn. Who knew? What the, and what so the, I can, I know, what the right? hell is a French horn? <laughs> <laughs> it's got... So he, he's even confused. <laughs> How to answer that? It's like a, it's uh, like a trumpet, the, but the bigger. Horny horn. <laughs> yes. Like a trumpet. So I could, one with the circles <laughs> in it, right? Kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Except really? this one's got yeah. those keys instead of those keys. I don't know. Anyway, so I learned that and could read music for all of about six months and then forgot. Wow. At least you could play without having, you know. I talked to a couple of people today and... They never learned how to read music either. They just naturally... We had a couple of younger people here earlier and they never learnt music as far as looking at the sheet and following it. They just naturally picked it up. I think so, that's the best way, to be honest, because you get your own feel for it then. More natural. Yeah, absolutely. You're not emulating anybody else. It all comes from here. And you feel the music. Exactly. I understand that totally. You got any questions, my friend? Do you feel artists are distancing themselves from listening to sheet music as you play and oh, songs? I wish that was true, but I think the opposite's probably more the case. I'm seeing more iPads than ever before. I personally have an iPad as well, so I can't really. I'm no judgment, but um, I'm I'm thinking that it's sort of it's given us a bit of a cheat. You know, you used to walk around with a big book with all your songs in it and flick through it and now you've got an iPad and you just go like that. And it's Musicians all, all like, all hey, Jesse, I've got the scale on your iPad. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's a lot of benefits in it too in that, like, for instance, last night I did a gig at a disco uh, thing, so I opened for a, a disco, disco a disco band. I opened for a disco band. So I don't know any disco music, but somebody said, hey, can you sing, you know, I Will Survive? Like, well, I don't know it, but I can go do, 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 I will survive and have and a you shot. Did it. You know? Yeah, I had a shot at it, yeah. So got, that's the benefit of it. You got Donna Summer on the wall. Oh, hi, Donna. <laughs> I will survive. Oh my and God. it's totally not my thing, oh, but. Gloria Gaynor's on the wall. Too. Hi, Gloria. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> song in, in its era. Definitely. It well, even now. Even now. Especially now. What's your favourite music? Oh, that's a good question. Um, big, big fan of Fleetwood Mac. Love Fleetwood Mac. Um, love Die Straits. Love Melissa Etheridge. Elvis, Rod Stewart. Um, oh, Credence, oh yeah, yeah. I love all the older stuff. Oh, Janis Joplin. I just watched a series on Elvis from the, when he first started till the day he died. Yep. And it was really fantastic, but at the same time, it was so sad to see somebody who brought out so much great music, and his live shows were brilliant. But then he had pieces of paper on the stage because he forgot the lyrics mm, and. Mm. That's when the drugs it started, yeah. you know, medication started kicking in. Mm. But he was a legend. Oh, and no his doubt. music will last forever. It will. Generations later. Yep. Whereas some of our great bands that come out one day 
couple of years later, they vanish into obscurity. Pretty much. Whereas Elvis will always be there. 100%. And, and same with your Fleetwood Macs and your Dire Straits and your Rolling Stones and your, your Led Zeppelins. Whereas oh, now, Led Zeppelin, yes! Whereas now, you're sort of screaming into a void because there's hundreds of thousands of artists now available at a couple of touches of a button. Yep. So, you know, it's got a lot of benefits too, but it's I just wonder if you're ever going to see those really big touring bands that are going to have that longevity. I'm just disappointed in one thing because years ago people used to go out and buy the records yeah. and put the band and their level on the charts up there in reality. Now they sit at home, they punch in a band, they get all their songs, download them, and the band don't get shit. Yeah, and so I think it's like 0 0.001 cent or something yeah, per play. Yeah, thanks a lot. Something, <laughs> I know, something ridiculous. Oh, it's a depressing. Yeah, it Not is. quite the same. And not only that, you're not getting that experience anymore. You used to get an album, you know, you'd open it up, you've, you've got something tactile, yep. you've got pictures, you've got all the lyrics, you've got, you know, everything. It was, a, it was an experience. You don't have that experience anymore. And they thought about the flow of the album and how it was going to sound from song A to the, you know, the last song and... All that's sort of gone now. You just sort of pick the songs out that you want. So. Yeah. And as, oh, sorry. As an artist, though, you find that you have a dynamic shift in the way people take in music. Mm. Does that inspire you to go out and tour more and pound the pavement a bit more if you're going to meet with cents and dollars on the paycheck every time you see Spotify? Oh, to be perfectly honest with you, the cents and dollars never mean a thing to me. It's always been about the music. You know, if I don't make anything from it, I don't make anything from it. It's just what gets me by. It's what keeps me on the planet, what keeps me doing life, you know. So for me, it's not really that important. The only thing I suppose <clears throat> that it does give you is a really wide scope of audience. So I had somebody that heard me in Ireland and who happened to be a radio presenter over there and put me on a plane and took me to Ireland and I toured wow. Ireland for three months. That wouldn't have happened 30 years ago unless some you know, intermediary was there to make that connection. So that's the benefit. So there are plenty of benefits. It's just a different world. And I'm, I grew up sort of watching Hey Hey at Saturday and thinking, yes, I'm gonna be on Red Faces. You know, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna make it through those channels. And by the time I got to the age where I was ready for that, it was all gone. So yeah, you've got to kind of take the channels that you can. So you have a sense of freedom to an artist to be like, I'm going to pick up a, record, a call from a record producer in Ireland and head out to County Cork tomorrow afternoon to play a show. Pretty much, except it was mine. But yeah, pretty oh, much. Like you, you do have that, that freedom. I mean, obviously, it's, you've still got to know people or they've got to see you or, you know, you've got, you've got to be out there and do the yards. I don't think that it's stopped that you need to pay your dues. I think that getting online and making a video is all good and well if you want your three seconds of fame. But if you actually want to make something of this, even if it's not for the money, but just to be in and amongst it, you got to go out there and do the hard yards. Pound the pavement. 100%. But if you didn't do live, would it be the same effect for you? No. I don't think I'd do it if I didn't do it live. Yeah. Because it's not about... I, I, young, I was arrogant because I think that's what you are when you're young and you're Everyone a musician. Is. Everyone is. Having grown up a little bit, I've realised it's not about me. It's, it's not about me. It, uh, otherwise, I could sing at home it's and play in the, the lounge music. room. It's about the people that are listening to the music. It's what they want. And, it, and not, not, not exclusively. You've got to be passionate and love what you do. Do you love it when you finish your set and people give you a huge round of applause? I really do. Yeah, it's a Isn't bit addictive. Isn't that the buzz? Yeah, it really is. But not only that, even if I'm singing something that I wrote and I see somebody, you know, sort of really getting into it or I have made people cry or something like that, even those little things, you know, just that you've touched somebody's life is really important. You meant something to them. Exactly. They heard something and they've gone, wow, those lyrics are awesome. Exactly, and they could relate to it. And then on a selfish note, I meant something to somebody on this planet once. Cool. And when they leave the building, they think, wow, that was an awesome night. Exactly. And that lady, she was, she was great. Well, I, I hope so. <laughs> I hope well, so. Well, <laughs> when they give you a big round of applause in the show, Generally. that means <laughs> that you did the right thing. True, true. So, I mean, music has that ability to touch people and uplift them, and, and that's part of the reason I do it too, and that's what got me involved with uh, Anita Donlan and the uh, Australian Horizons Foundation and Let's Get Rural and stuff like that, was that bringing, you know, uh, a bit of... Uh, 
you know, that excitement and uh, being able to touch people and being able to relate to the music with, with people in, in different situations. So. Do you love being a live entertainer? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. Albums are all good and fun, but it, live is the best. Thank you for coming here today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And you too, Les. Thank I you hope so that you succeed in whatever you want to do. Thank you. Because uh, you're naturally a lovely lady to talk oh, to. Thank you. And we had a giggle before when you got here. <laughs> and he didn't even say much. He actually shut up and listened to you. Oh, too many Jessies. You know, makes <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for this lovely lady, Jessie. Well thank done. <laughs> See ya. Sharks have gathered round. You smile as you watch me bleed, but you will not drag me down. How can you get the satisfaction on someone else's pain? When there's no one left to save you, you'll finish with your game. Cause you just don't care. Thank you.